pro bono is part of what I would say is our DNA, our raison d'être. And it's always been so since we were created in 2000. And it's so because we think as a law firm we have a immense responsibility to society as a whole. It's a great thing for training younger lawyers, but what's also unique here, I think, is that it's not just a way to delegate work to younger people. The reason it's part of our culture is that senior people in the firm, too, take pro bono extremely seriously. And as a result, it's one of the defining features of Borden Ladner Gervais. The range of support we provide on a pro bono basis is really equal to the range of services we offer any paying clients. There's nothing in principle that we couldn't provide on a pro bono basis. So whether or not they're court appearances, uh, assisting clients before administrative tribunals or government agencies, or providing assistance in writing legal opinions, that's all available across the range of expertise we have, whether it be in construction law, charity law, administrative law, constitutional law, et cetera, et cetera. So really our firm, as long as the project is something that uh, we think is deserving, uh, if we have the expertise, we can provide it on a pro bono basis. The issue of whether or not pro bono makes a difference in people's lives, I think, is answered in a general sense and in a specific sense. And I'll first talk about the general sense. When we take pro bono cases, it's because we've determined that there are people who do not have the resources to get what they're entitled to, in, in our view, uh, at law. So if somebody, for example, should have government benefits and is fighting with the government in question and cannot get them and needs a lawyer, when obviously if we're successful and they get their social security benefits as a result, for example, they will have benefited from our pro bono work. So that's a general principle. We take on pro bono cases because they will make a difference in people's lives. And in a more concrete example, perhaps dramatic, we were involved in a case involving a man who had been wrongfully convicted uh, in the 1960s. He'd been sentenced to 15 years, he did five or six years in jail, and then spent the rest of his life, literally, fighting to have the governments recognize that he had been wrongfully convicted and seeking damages. He was ultimately uh, acquitted by the Supreme Court of Canada in 1997, and in the last couple of years we won a judgment or settled the case actually after a trial with the government of Quebec for a multi-million dollar award. What this man wanted was vindication more than money and he got it uh, as a result in part of our assistance of him uh, on, on a pro bono basis. That's a dramatic example uh, but there are lots of examples like that perhaps not as dramatic but where the impact in people's lives is real and that's why from the most junior lawyer to the most senior lawyers in the firm from Montreal to Vancouver and every other part of the country we cover, we try to make a difference, sometimes small, sometimes large in people's lives, but always a difference. That's what pro bono is all about. Pro bono is part of our culture and it wouldn't be true unless it were part of every office in, in the country that we're in. So every office has a pro bono committee that uh, gets uh, applications and so every committee then sifts through the applications and decides whether or not they're worthy. And so every office therefore has an opportunity to participate and does participate in the pro bono program. The range of services we offer on a pro bono basis and the fact that we offer it across every office in this country is simply a testimony to how important we think pro bono is at VLG. Mm -hmm.